Welcome back everyone, this is another Chris Chorus with your host Chris, and I'm finally back from vacation, so I'm going to be giving you guys some of the best web tutorials out there on the web, or so I'd like to believe at least. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Webpack to create multiple bundles that we can load on an on-demand basis based on which page we're visiting. So this is very useful to ensure that we're only loading the exact scripts that we need in order for our page to run. So let's head on over to the browser, I'll show you how to implement this from scratch, and let's get started. Alright, so as I mentioned, we are going to be using Webpack to create multiple bundles that are only loaded on specific pages. So if we look in webpack.config.js right now, you're going to see that this is our typical way of bundling one file into another. Anything within home.js, any module that's referenced, is going to be bundled specifically into bundle.js. And this is good if our app is small, if we only have like one page or so and we're only loading a few scripts, then this is totally okay. But once we start having multiple pages, such as a home.js, um, or excuse me, a home page, an about page, or a contact page, then we might want to start splitting this bundle up into separate bundles rather than just one giant bundle that's loaded across all of these separate pages. So to do this, we are not going to reference a string, we are actually going to reference an object within our, obj or within our entry property. And this object is going to reference all of the files within our source directory. So we'd start off by referencing a home property, and this home property is going to reference our file within our source directory of home.js. So this would consist of, this would be one file that we write code in, specifically for scripts for our home page. But let's say that we want a script specifically for an about page. Well, in that case, we would add an about property. And this about property would reference another file for scripts that we're only going to write on our about page. So it's going to be called about.js. But since it doesn't exist at the moment, we need to make sure that we're actually creating this file. So we're going to create this file right now within our source directory. And it's going to be called about.js. So now that we have the file in place, you may think that if we run Webpack, that it would be compiled into two separate files. But you'll see that if we look within our distribution directory, it's still being compiled into just solely bundle.js. So we need to do one more thing to ensure that these two files, these two entry points, are being outputted into two separate bundles. And to do this, we are going to prefix bundle.js with two brackets, an opening and closing bracket. And we're going to add the string name within here. And this name string is going to reference each of these properties. Anything within this entry property is going to be referenced one on one with this name string. So this is referencing home, and this is also referencing about. And so when we run Webpack with this in place, you're going to see that we have two separate files rather than just one. So we have one bundle specifically for our home page, and we have one bundle specifically for our about page. We don't need bundle.js anymore since we're not actually combining our about and our home scripts together. So we can get rid of that, and we're good to go. So as you see, I don't have anything within either of these files, but let's say within our home page, I want to make sure that I'm console logging out that this is the home page. And to make sure that we're referencing scripts within our about page, I want to make sure I'm console logging out this is the about page. That, this way we can tell the difference between what we're referencing between our index.html file and our about.html file. So with this in place, let's go ahead and reference our new scripts. Within index.html, I'm going to create a script tag. And this script tag is going to have a source of dist slash home.bundle.js. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for our about page. I'm just going to copy that, paste it in here. But since we have different scripts for our about page, we want to make sure we're referencing the other bundle that we created. So it's going to be dist slash about.bundle.js. So since we add a new code in here and Webpack currently isn't watching our files, we need to make sure that we run Webpack again. Typically you'd have Webpack watch property on, which will make sure that any changes made in here are recompiled automatically. So now that we recompiled Webpack, we can go ahead and view this in the browser. And if we refresh the page, you're going to see home.bundle.js is being loaded. And if we look at console, you'll see that the code only specific to home.js is being loaded as well. So let's check out about.js our about page and if I reference this or excuse me if I refresh this you're going to see that we have the string specific to just about.js so this is a good way to ensure that we are being as efficient as possible we don't want the code for about.js to be 
loaded within home.js like this because it's inefficient. We don't need to load this code on home.js and we wouldn't need to load this homepage code on about.js. So this is a good way to ensure that we're loading our code in the most efficient way possible. We're really optimizing our websites. And this is something you can do across any framework, any backend framework. It can be something like Laravel. It can be something like Express. Um, even WordPress, you can use this kind of stuff. So it's really helpful for ensuring that your site's being optimized in the best way possible. So if you have any questions about this, guys, let me know. In the next video, I'm going to be extending this lesson. We are going to be covering the Commons Chunk plugin, which extends upon what we just learned here but it integrates some cacheability functionality into the mix, which is actually really cool and it's one of the main features of Webpack. So I really hope you stay tuned for that one because when I first found out what Webpack actually provides with this feature, I thought it was awesome and I think you guys will too. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video, guys. Hope you enjoy this one. Glad to be back and I'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.